Hello language lovers, today's episode will dive into four intriguing words, griffonage, cacistocracy, braggadocio and moniker. Each of these words carries its own unique charm and history. So let's get started. But first, if you haven't already, do subscribe to The English Nut on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and X. Thank you. Griffonage. It sounds quite fancy, but it simply means illegible or careless handwriting. It's the kind of writing that makes you squint and wonder if it's even in English. The doctor's prescription was written in such griffonage that the pharmacist had to call to clarify the medication. Her notes from the lecture were a mix of doodles and griffonage, making it hard for her to study later. The word griffonage is borrowed from French and originates in the Middle French word griffoné, which means to scribble. In the past, scribes were highly valued for their clear and beautiful handwriting, so griffonage was something to be avoided at all costs. Nowadays, we mostly type on our devices, hardly ever writing with pen and paper, so our handwriting is getting worse and worse, making the word griffonage more relevant than ever. According to the Grey Essence on Instagram, doctor's handwriting can be called cacography or griffonage or hen scratch. Cacography is another old word that means bad handwriting or bad spelling. Professor Dashiel said on TikTok, In my youth, I had beautiful penmanship, but with age, it has become griffonage. The words griffonage and cacography were suggested by Arijit1272. Cacistocracy. This term refers to a government run by the worst, least qualified or most unscrupulous citizens. It's a word that often pops up in political discourse, especially during turbulent times. Seeing the widespread corruption and incompetence among their leaders, citizens feared that the country was descending into a cacistocracy. Historical examples of cacistocracy can be found in regimes where power was seized by the most ruthless individuals. The word cacistocracy is derived from the Greek words kakistos, meaning worst, and kratos, meaning rule. Interestingly, it was first used in the 17th century and has seen a resurgence in recent years, reflecting ongoing political sentiments. Thomas Love Peacock was an English novelist, poet, and official of the East India Company. He asked, Is ours a government of the people, by the people, for the people, or a cacistocracy rather, for the benefit of knaves at the cost of fools? Well, the British East India Company, which ruled India and bled it dry, was definitely a cacistocracy created for the benefit of knaves. English theologian William Frederick Faber wrote, Good men of calm judgment, looking at the course of events, have seriously feared that our government was rapidly becoming a cacistocracy, a rule of the worst. He wrote this about England in 1886, but it seems to be just as valid for many other parts of the world today. What's the solution? Well, for starters, as the online newspaper TechCrunch suggests, to redress cacistocracy, we need to tune into online news channels and share our thoughts. The word cacistocracy was suggested by Sudha Mysore Ranganath. The word braggadocio refers to vain, empty boasting, where there is little substance to what you are showing off about. It's the kind of attitude that makes people roll their eyes and mutter under their breath. His braggadocio about his supposed accomplishments alienated him from his colleagues. The character in the novel was full of braggadocio, always exaggerating his feats to impress others. Braggadocio comes from the name of a boastful character in Edmund Spencer's 16th century epic poem, The Fairy Queen. The name was formed by adding the Italian suffix occhio, meaning something large of its kind, to the word braggart. Over time, the term has evolved to describe anyone who engages in excessive boasting or arrogant pretension. Musician Aesop Rock said, I love the playfulness and braggadocio that accompanies a ton of rap music. That's basically what makes up the foundation for most rappers. But there is nothing weirder to me than someone who has never doubted themselves. 
I agree with them. Too much self-doubt can be paralyzing, but a little bit is necessary for self-awareness, something which narcissists probably lack. No wonder American psychologist Daniel Goleman said, Narcissists alone are blatant in their self-inflation and braggadocio, leavened with a necessary dose of self-deception. American writer and social commentator H. L. Mencken observed, Man makes love by braggadocio and woman makes love by listening. Doesn't speak well of men, does it? The word braggadocio was suggested by Murari Prasad. A moniker is simply a name or nickname. It's a fun word that adds a bit of flair to the concept of naming. Monikers are used in various contexts, from stage names to affectionate nicknames. The word can also be spelt with a CK instead of just K. Musician Gordon Matthew Sumner got the moniker Sting because of a striped sweater he used to wear that made him look like a bee. Authors often choose intriguing monikers to publish their works under pseudonyms. The origins of the word moniker are somewhat mysterious. It is believed to have emerged from shelter, the secret language of Irish travellers. Here's a quote from Twinkle on jagranjosh.com. APJ Abdul Kalam earned the moniker Missile Man of India for his contributions to the advancement of launch vehicles and ballistic missile technology. Christopher Poole, American internet entrepreneur and founder of anonymous English language image board 4chan said, As a teenager, I used to use the nickname Moo as a moniker online and then I turned into Moot for fun, which I didn't even realize was a real word at the time and it just stuck with me. The word moniker was suggested by Shoram Kundu. Whether you're deciphering griffonage, critiquing a cacistocracy, rolling your eyes at braggadocio, or choosing a moniker, you're simultaneously improving your vocabulary. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The English Nut for more delightful dives into the world of words. Until next time, keep exploring and keep on being nuts about English. I'm The English Nut. Bye. For now.